So welcome to Real Estate Stories. I'm your host, Cody Coda. Got my co-host here, Jake McClure. Hello. All welcome. right. And we've got a special guest for you today. Sarah Mathis has joined us. Hello, Sarah. Hey, how's it going, everyone? All right. Thanks awesome. for having me. Well, thanks for coming on. So we'll go ahead and get started, just jump right into it. Absolutely. So what what brought you into real estate, Sarah? So when I had my daughter, uh, I was working as a, as a project manager for a large sign company doing um, hospital, big wayfinding packages. I absolutely loved it. Um, but I was really having a difficult time uh, finding reliable daycare. So um, after she turned about eight months old, I just, my husband and I made the decision that we were going to go down to a one income family, which was really quite difficult. And um, at that time, one of my clients, one of my signed clients uh, was uh, using us for graphics. And he said, you know what, why don't you do real estate? And I was like, no, I, no, no, I'm not going to do real estate. Uh, I don't know anything about it. It's just out of my comfort zone. So he hired me to work from home doing a lot of graphics, um, heavy graphics and advertising and, you know, just kind of doing some assisting. And um, I loved it. It gave me the ability to be with my daughter. And, uh, and so that's just kind of how I got into it. And I'm still forever thankful to him. Awesome. Awesome. That's cool. Um, so you said you did signs and graphics before you got into real estate? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I worked in Nashville for years and then I worked um, in a, uh, at a place in uh, Oklahoma City. And I started out as graphic design, but I moved into project management for the larger package. So I worked with a lot of contractors, which I think helped in, in real estate. Um, working with subcontractors and contractors, it just kind of taught me how to manage that part of my business more yeah so i'm pretty grateful for that experience it's funny because in you know the language huh yeah you know the language yeah and it's just kind of funny you know the language. yeah so what uh, what keeps you in real estate so uh honestly i don't think i can make uh as much money and have as much flexibility i mean if i'm just putting all my cards out on the table um the idea of doing something else that's less stressful, because let's be honest, this is very stressful, um, has always appealed to me. But in the past 10 years, I'm able to be with my kids when I need to be with my kids, even though I work all the time. And um, I am able to provide for my family. And so I don't think I could make this kind of living with the amount of flexibility that I have anywhere else. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, that, that makes sense. What do you think makes you successful in real estate though? I think at the beginning I was just, you know, it was like, I was hungry. It was necessity. I've got to feed my family. And now, um, it's just the, the comfortability with my past clients and being there for them and building these relationships. Cause over time I kind of just built my life around real estate. I mean, a lot of people tell you that you have to like do one or the other and you have to keep them separate. But for me, my life is real estate and I can't imagine it being any other way. All my friends, all my family. I mean, we're just, that's what we do. Bunch of real estate junkies, huh? Yes. <laughs> um, what advice would you have given your, your past self? Coming into um, it? I would have said it's okay to fire somebody. It's okay to say no. Um, uh, you know, you don't have to be on call 24 seven, but I don't know, maybe that was, maybe that's what made me successful is I was willing to do what other people weren't willing to do. But um, I really wish I, I, somebody would have told me, you know what, it's okay to say no and to, you know, draw, draw a line between like family time and you know, real estate time. To be okay with that, don't be like having that self guilt uh, of being like, man, no, I understand what you're saying. So, so the viewer, a, go ahead, Jake. Is there a specific story uh, that that you're kind of queuing off of that that uh, that you kind of have that comes to that you you wish you would have said no to? 
Yeah. So, I mean, there's, I could give so many instances, but I specifically remember I had a referral client and it, uh, she was a difficult lady. Um, just, uh, she was an attorney and she knew what she wanted and I'd been showing her homes like $400,000 homes. So it wasn't like, you know, just a little deal for about a month. And we have been circling around on a property. Um, and I had reached out to her a couple of days before to see if she wanted to see it again. And she never got back with me. She called me on Mother's Day and said, basically, I would not, I was going to be fired if I didn't go show it to her that day. So I did. I took my kids with me. And in retrospect, did have just let it go? Yeah. Yeah. So for the, I, the viewers at home, Sarah, what, what do you uh, think that? give a little bit of a a background so you you're an owner you're a real estate owner of a company are you just a single agent do you lead a team just so people kind of get to know you a little bit better so so for eight years it was just me by myself and my mother um and she would she although she was retired she would help me show sometimes because i have three little girls but now um I, two years ago, I opened my own brokerage and now I run a team. It's a small team because we are in a rural area, although we're expanding. And um, what area is that, by the way? We are uh, Logan County. And of course, we we run Guthrie, Crescent, um, Mole Hall, Edmond. um, So just kind of in that area. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so we kind of have a a rainmaker set up right now where I'm just the team lead and then I have a buyer's agent and I have a transaction coordinator and a listing coordinator as well as a, my mom will come and assist us sometime in showings. Okay, cool, cool. So what, uh, how long do you think it took you to get your first closing? Oh my gosh, it was, it was immediate. I, I mean, I didn't have any trouble whatsoever. I don't know got why. Got your license. That. Got yeah. your license. Next day, went to the bank with your, your check. Well, it was, you know, it was immediate. Like, um, I was already um, working as uh, as this person's assistant. And then he, when I got my license, he handed me over showings immediately. And I just took him from there. Uh, I think I wrote a contract, like, the first day I actually had I got you. I got you. You kind of led me to my next question. That's kind of a cool thing too to walk into it. So what did that support? I mean, you're this big time rain making, um, highly leveraged uh, agent today. W- what did that look like when you first got into the business? Though? What was your support when you got in? Well, so my husband, Justin, was working uh, 50, 60 hours a week, um, and I had an eight-month-old, and then subsequently I had a, another one two years later, and then another baby uh, three years later. And so really, my support system, my mom would help me go show some properties, but I would find myself taking my girls wherever I went if I was showing um, and, uh, you know, I just had the ability to, with this job, to work. Although there was many conversations where I was in the closet, like, just trying to get away from screaming kids so I could have, a, like, a conversation on the phone. It was, it was rough in the beginning. Um, and I don't know what I would have done without my mom being there to pick up some of the slack when I couldn't. That's awesome. Um, what disillusions did you uncover that you may have had from when you first got into the business? So the biggest, the pitch that I got about doing real estate was that you can make all of this money and you um, don't have to work very hard. uh, And, you know, it's a very part-time thing. And I found myself immediately working 70 hours a week, you know, and just nonstop. I think the biggest thing is it's not even the number of hours a week. It's that you're just, as you guys know, you're always on call. So there's never a time, or there wasn't back then, that I didn't feel pressure because I was always just waiting for the phone to ring. Mm-hmm. And that, so that in itself was a big disillusion. I, I didn't realize how hard you had to work for the money that you made. Yeah, there's gotcha. a lot of the clock. You're always, you're always on the clock. Uh, I mean, something happens with the transaction. You got to drop what you're doing and get to it. So... Yeah. Okay. Who, uh, who, who's your inspiration, Sarah, and why? So I'm kind of funny in that way. I just think, 
as I got older, because I'm turning 40 this year. Um, I think, <laughs> yeah, as I'm getting older, though, I really should have outside inspiration and look up to people. And maybe that's kind of a downfall to me. But I find that I have so much anxiety when I start to compare yeah. myself to somebody else that really... I set my own goals and I try to um, not compare myself to other people because I just feel like, you know, that's just going to set yourself up for failure or anxiety. Um, we're all just uh, doing the best we can. And so maybe I should look up to somebody, but right now I'm just, comp I'm just comfortable doing what I'm doing. What, what inspires you? So if it's not a person, well, it, maybe it's a thing or maybe it's a place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's more of a, uh, yeah, it's more of that where just having the ability to right now I'm homeschooling my child or both my children, um, the five and the nine year old, and I was able to work things around. So really what inspires me is having some freedom, some mobility, um, and then also being debt free. So like when I, when I go out and I show houses, um, some clients are out there in Mercedes and Alexis, I get really excited about debt free lifestyles. Um, and so for me, that's my inspiration is, um, creating generational wealth where my family will no longer, and I'll teach my kids how to not become in debt. So, so how, how do you do that though? If it's not about getting the big fancy car, what is it about? Like, how do you stay out of debt? Like what's the, how do you build this generational wealth? Cause that stuff so sounds to, good and it's cool to put on a t-shirt, but like, how does that work? So that's, that's right. So um, essentially generational wealth is about creating um, essentially creating a cushion for your family to move forward and then creating a legacy for them to kind of go off of. So not just an inheritance, but a, um, a system in place to continue to make money for us. What that means is we started out with nothing and now we have seven rental properties. And the idea behind it is, is those will continue to generate uh, income and it's understood they'll continue to generate income, not for just my generation and not for my child, but going on and go, you know, so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And um, creating this, you know, income where they don't really necessarily need it, but it's there if in a crisis. And then also trying to teach them how to manage money better. Right. That's good. Thank you for breaking that down for us. Um, what's been the most embarrassing story that you would like to share that you've had in real estate? <laughs> there, my gosh, there are so many you guys. Um, and I thought about this beforehand, but I think that my most embarrassing is the time that I accidentally property brothered somebody and I didn't mean to, you know, where they, they go in and they're like, you know, you love this house. Well, guess what? It's $500,000 over your budget. Well, I went out to show houses and, um, my GPS took me to a house and it was for sale. And, and I went in and they're like, Oh my God. I kept thinking, this is a really good deal for this house. Like this is like a really good deal. And they're like, we love it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm at the wrong house. You <laughs> walked into the wrong house. I've done that too, by the way. You're not the first agent on here too that's done that. That's, well, I've gotten that check, story before. So check this out. The, the, the very first house that I ever showed, my first clients that I ever got, uh, they you know, they looked at houses at like 7, 7.30, right around the time it's real dark outside. My GPS takes me in the neighborhood. Uh, I didn't really, I wasn't really following it as much as I was just trying to get there on time because I was late. I see the house. There's a sign in the yard. I pull up. I was like, okay, open the lockbox, get in the house. The alarm goes off. So oh, there's, there wasn't anything about it, the alarm in the notes. Uh, and I'm calling the listing agent, calling the listing agent. They're not answering the phone. They finally answer the phone. I said, hey, uh, you didn't tell me there's an alarm. They go, there's, there's not an alarm in the house. Oh my God. Uh, it, sh it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be on. What do you mean? Uh, and I was like, what? Uh, <laughs> so I run out uh, to the front yard. And I look at the, the sign. That's not the name of the person that I'm on the phone with. <laughs> I'm, at the, I'm at the wrong house completely. And I look like down the street and my clients are four houses down at the actual house that I'm supposed to be showing. Uh, but it's in the same price point. So I finally get a hold of the listing agent. Luckily, the homeowners weren't home. It was an occupied home. Oh my gosh! And it was a police officer. 
So the alarm company uh, called the called the police officer because I didn't get the alarm disabled in time. The, the dude pulls up as I'm showing the house, uh, and then we have to have, shoot, you know talk it up with the the homeowner, um, and then actually go look at the house we were supposed to go look at. But the very first showing uh, was that right yeah, there. Yeah, you, you, baptism of fire right there, Jake. Right. That's exactly, <laughs> that's just how I do things is, is stuff did like you that. Play, did just, you play it off or did you just like, you know no, what? <laughs> no, I'm I, like, you know, I, I pride myself when I like pull things off. I, you know, I like to be like, well, look at that, you know. Mm -hmm. But when I you know, have tremendous failures, I like to point that out too. Because it is funny. It but is it's funny. Like, uh, you know, sorry, uh, you want to look at this house too? You know, it's, it's open. Might as well. You might yeah. as well. It's in the same yeah. price point, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Was, you know, I had a pool. <laughs> funny, funny. What, uh, what's been a, a, maybe a scary story you want to share? Well, I think we all have ours where, you know, like our spidey senses like tingle mm -hmm. a little bit, like maybe I should listen to my intuition. Um, but I remember specifically going out to McLeod one time and showing a property kind of just out there. And it was a sign, uh, it was a sign call and it was just two, it was a guy on the phone and I went out there just kind of last minute, but two gentlemen showed up acting like super, like, I don't know, just odd not really asking about questions, but just keep like kept wanting me to come inside. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've just kind of, I just kind of opened the door, which I never really do, but I opened the door and I'm like, no, I'm just gonna, you know, I'll wait here. And um, they maybe were in there 15 seconds and they left. Like it was just so bizarre, but I just refused to like go inside the house. You know, you gotta listen to your intuition. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What's been the most uncomfortable or stressful situation you've been in as an agent? <laughs> that never, you never know situations, right? Yeah, like I, I don't know what's not stressful. I think at the end of the day, we owe it to our clients to be as um, fair and, um, you know, we recommend a lot of you know, lenders and contractors, we have all have our sources, but at the end of the day, um, we have to be um, unbiased. And so what was really uncomfortable is I had a lender that I had an extremely long relationship with and um, they kind of dropped the ball and it was like, okay, I had to make a decision on where, where, which actions to follow, like change lenders, um, or go with the client and it, and then this happens all the time so what but, happened the lender started screwing stuff up and you had to yeah, get in the, there and tell them yeah and there's this is know, normal yeah and it wasn't like a normal thing but um but they really asked me to you know kind of not look the other way but like kind of smooth things over at the end of the day i didn't feel like what was happening was right for my clients regardless of my past relationship so i i had to fire that lender and it was extremely uncomfortable and painful because some of these times you are friends with eventually you're friends with these people you've worked with them so much but at the end of the day it is business and you have to do what's right for your clients it can get very uncomfortable don't yeah they can't screw up your stuff um what's uh what's been a happy time a happy time as an agent what's the most happiest funnest story just brings uh, joy, tears of joy to your. Well, I almost laughed so hard uh, this uh, on Saturday. I uh, I had to go home and almost change my undies because I don't know if you got. I don't know if you did. Like you saw it. Did you see my video on Instagram? You guys know. Uh, 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 we were doing. On? We were doing a uh, virtual tour, and uh, William, my assistant, was uh, filming me, and um, he was going out in the backyard and he just rolled down the stairs, like a, the slowest barrel roll I've ever seen in my life. It was like laughable. And I was like crying so hard that I, he was, I was, I just said, Will, William, and I said his, his name. And he was like, this. and I don't know. It was just like so funny. And I love that now in my life, I can cut up with all my teammates, you know, and, um, you Hold know, on just, a second here. So you're saying William, he tripped down the stair staircase? 
And you're saying this is the happiest story. You really want to go on a record of this being the happiest I story. I am actually going on a record saying <laughs> okay. this was the happiest time. He, Would he William has, fell down the stairs? <laughs> you know what? This this dude, we took pictures one time last year, and he convinced me to just, like, get in a dumpster and like it was just going to be for him, and he thought it was hysterical. Next thing I knew, he put he posted it all over, uh, you know, Instagram and Facebook that I was dumpster diving for deals. So <laughs> I'm just saying. It's marketable. That's, that's good. But that's anyway, really but good. truly, it's my real estate family right now. Like I am loving real estate um, right now more than I ever have. That's good. What about what? Would you say is your just best story that you could share with the viewers, just all time best story in real estate ever. Maybe something that happened to you that you want to share. Oh, my best story. Well, so a few years ago I was, um, selling a house to, um, to a husband and wife and they were both military and, um, they ended up selling the house to somebody I also knew from the military and just the serendipity of it all. I mean, it's just, it's a crazy story, but the serendipity of it all and how it worked out in a very complicated situation just made me think that there is something that was something greater that, you know, was going on, but it's funny how things come for full circle. And I mean, I know that's not a great story, but I, I truly believe that it's just kind of funny how things come in like, you know. Well, maybe if you kind of gave us a little bit more details on it, because I'm mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, I so I, uh, I had old military friends that okay. I, hadn't, I hadn't spoke to in forever. And we were, I was selling a house for a military couple that had to leave immediately. They had, uh, they had negative equity on the house. It was just a bad situation for them. And as much as I tried to sell it, you know, we were overpriced and it was too high. And so um, just in happenstance, uh, this person that I hadn't spoke to in like 10 years reached out to me and they're like, hey, guess what? We're, we're being stationed in Oklahoma. And I was like, hey, uh, okay, well, do you need a house? And they're like, yeah, but we need this, this, and this, and this, and it has to be in this location. And, uh, it was like a perfect fit. And surprisingly enough, it appraised. But I think what was most amazing about it all is that I just knew the people coming in, like truly knew the people that were coming into it and was able to directly sell a house based on to based on a connection that I made 10 years prior, which was pretty amazing to me. You know, so these customers yeah. were people that you knew 10 years ago, I mean, you were able to help them find the house. Mm -hmm. So that's the happenstance is what, I'm, what, what you're getting at. And I hadn't spoken to him in years. It was just, it was just, yeah, serendipitous. So. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, what, uh, when did you know that you, that Sarah Mathis made it in real estate? When did you know that it was, it was done? Has Sarah Mathis made it in real estate? I could be flipping burgers next month. No. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think that I had a conversation with my mom about a year ago and I told her that I think I made it. And she said, what do you mean? And I said, how long ago is this? Sorry. About a year ago. About a year ago. And I said, and she's like, what do you mean? And I said, I think I made it. And, and she, she, and I said in real estate and she said, well, what makes you say that? And I said, because, even if I go, don't knock on one more door or I make one more sales call, I built up such a rapport and, um, you know, a loyal client base that I could comfortably make a living just serving those people I've served before. And in, to me, that's making it is that I could coast if I wanted to. I'm not going to because it's not my personality, but I could. And I think that in itself is the referral business is where I think you make it. That's, that's, a, that's a good, honest answer. A lot of times, the most popular answer we get is, I hadn't made it or, you know, but you actually gave an exact, you know, time frame about a year ago, almost a day in time. So that's cool. I appreciate that answer. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what's the best advice you've ever gotten in real estate? 
Um, I think the best advice I ever got in real estate was actually it's more geared towards um, property ownership and, and being a landlord in itself. And um, this guy told me one time that regardless, I don't know how you'll take this, but regardless, you always have a business partner, meaning that, um, you know, you never want to be the bad guy. Nobody ever wants to be the bad guy. So then your partner's always the bad guy. And um, I don't know why I'm you know, going, but anyway, that was actually the best advice because I feel like that was able, you were able to kind of, yeah, that's, the some, ugly that's, stuff. Some, that's some Roger Dawson, the secret yeah. powers of negotiating 101, a higher authority. Mm -hmm. Let me see what I can do for you with them. Always right. have that board, have that board of directors, have that business partner that's making that final decision. And it was just so nice because, you know, uh, since then I was just like, it never clicked on, clicked with me. And since then, I, I mean, I've always had that, but before that I was just getting like angry phone calls and the buck stopped here. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm cut out for this. I'm actually, although they call me the bulldog at the office, I'm actually very in my personal life, not confrontational and I don't enjoy it. So that was, the best advice I ever got. That's your nickname at the office is they call you Sarah the Bulldog? Yeah, wow. not like a loving way, but like uh, we're all making fun of you way. <laughs> but yeah. they also call me when they need me to uh, handle some stuff. Because <laughs> so. they know Sarah goes for the throat. Is that what it's for? <laughs> <sighs> okay. Um, what, uh, how would you describe your personality outside of a bulldog? Uh, bipolar, I guess, maybe, um, very, I'm a very Gemini if you're into that. Um, so at home, what's Gemini, what's Gemini? It's maybe? the twins. Yeah, it's the twins. Uh, so I, it's like, I'm constantly two people inside my head. Um, and, and just in my life, but aren't we all though? I mean, I, I don't know, like I'm not inside anybody else's head, but it's very polar opposite for me. So at home, I'm um, a little more just kind of like, you know, go with the flow and, uh, you know, just easygoing. But um, at work, I would say my personality is very uh, aggressive, it's not the term I would like to use, but I'm sure that's what I would be described as. Intense. <laughs> Intense. intense. That's I like that. And very intense. That's that's what I use to uh, describe myself. That the people uh, give that same type of energy. You're, yeah. you're yeah. You're on the call with very intense people. So mm -hmm. you're among friends. Let me ask you this. So can you give like a for instance for uh, the viewers or listeners that don't really know what you're talking about? Maybe you can kind of give a for instance example of how you reacted maybe in a situation so people can kind of get an understanding of who Sarah is and how she, you know, what that means. Um, so if somebody was to, uh, you mean at work or at home? Yeah, maybe, maybe something that happened at the office, you know. Uh, so, um, well, so for instance, if somebody was to call and say, like recently, I have an agent that called me and said, Hey, Sarah, um, I showed this client a house and I asked them if they were working with other, another agent and they said, no, we're not wait, working with anybody. And so she went and showed the house and then she showed it a second time. The third time her client asked her to come out and show it one more time. When she shows up, the client's not there yet, but another agent is there. Um, so oh, no. Yeah, another agent is there and he was the, um, uh, the open house agent. And so there was, uh, he had thought, I guess that he was the agent. She thought she was the agent. And I remember in the past, my brokers telling me to just let it go and move on, but I'm not a let it go and move on person. And so, <laughs> and, um, so uh, I think she was really looking for me to tell her it was going to be okay. And, you know, just to like, you know, I don't know. I think she was just venting, but what did I do? Um, called him up, called the broker up um got a buyer's broker uh, agreement signed off wow. and um they tried to negotiate a deal where he was going to do the their listing and she was going to be the buyer's agent because they had one to sell to didn't work out that way in their favor um i really enjoy being a problem solver for people and some sometimes i really 
get on loving the feeling of like really helping people out and belling people out. And maybe that's why I am so intense is that okay. I don't like, mm. I don't like taking that no for an answer or I can't fix this. Maybe I'm just a mother hen. I don't know, but I like to fix things for people. And, um, yeah. So, uh, did they have, did, did either any of them have a brokerage agreement in place at all in the first? Okay. So that was, that was everybody's that mess up. Yeah. That should have been done immediately. Right but off I, the bat. Yeah. I think that the uncomfortable thing for a lot of agents now is to ask for that. I'm not uncomfortable. Um, but I think if you're like new, but if they, if they say to you a few times, like, yeah, I'm not working with anybody else. I'm not working with anybody else. I think her feeling was, well, if I make them sign it, then it's just kind of like, I'm not taking their word for it. And mm -hmm. I just, I just told her and I told my, my, uh, my agents is that it is a requirement and they can just blame it on me again, Cody, that higher power, of, you know, blame it on the broker. So we shouldn't be having those issues in the future. So you guys didn't like meet at the house. Like this is all handled through like the phone call. Mm -hmm, but well, Okay. I thought like you went to go show him the house for the second time. And then the other agent like pulls up and it was like that scene in Anchorman no, where you have all there. the, yeah, they were all the there news the stations house. that show up to do the what fight. An awkward situation. No, they what were both situation. standing there waiting for the client to show up and trying Perfect. to hash it out beforehand. So you guys were hashing it out before the client got there? To so square up. This, uh, I've, this <laughs> immediately like that, that scene in Anchorman where you've got like the, the news stations that. that I like. <laughs> Wait, I, mean, I, want to, oh, I want to be the public access people. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, what, uh, what's something that people, that most people don't know about you, maybe? Oh, um, let's see. There's a lot. I, my life is pretty o an open book, but I like to cross stitch like uh, profanity at night. What? <laughs> Like, and, then, and then give it away as gifts. <laughs> wait, hey, I'm, she cross stitches. That's her I'm, superpower. I, I, I'm hazy on what that is. Are you telling me that like you you stitch words into something that are curse words, but like, but in a very out. nice floral way? Yeah. And then Hold I on a second it. here. You really cross stitch curse words. Yeah, I do. Hilarious. Yes. I want I want a pillow or something. You uh, should. I, uh, it's not, it's I, not I just that I cross I cross stitch other things, but I um mostly curse words. Mo mostly, um, uh, and then I give them to people that think it's funny. <laughs> you should give it to. You should give like special ones to the other side of transactions that just didn't go well. Like if the other agent just sucked, just give them a. Uh, a pillow that says you, you suck. Uh, something a little more uh, graphic than that, but I think that like I would personally love that. Like I like <laughs> even, even even if the other side hated me uh, mm -hmm. and they gave me something like that, the, the 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 effort of going through and making something that funny and that the, the time. Uh, and dedication. That, that to, dedication to, like you have to, to that, yeah. It's a, it's a respect thing. It's just like, okay, I, I, I respect the hustle. Uh, I would look at it like, surely she didn't mean to spell that out. Oh, oh that, yeah. yeah I'm there's, taking, there's no question. There's no question. That's good. Okay, that's interesting. Okay. I didn't, I did not know that about you, Sarah. You got us that one. You got to take that aggression and put it somewhere. I'm sure there's healthier places to put it, but you know, it's better than just screaming in the street. If you made put it like on a ball or something, you could put something funny and then hit him in the face with it. I think that yeah. would be uh, that would be something that I would be very into, just for you know gift reference, gift reference. Uh, down the road. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. So Jake likes to do a little PI work on our guests, and so maybe uh, he's done way, some. It, you frame it in such a way that I'm actually going. Hey, stop mentioning have, the PI work stuff. Uh, the ability to give the guests like the chill down their throat, like oh my, or you know down their back, like what is about to come. There's nothing more that a woman in 2020 wants to hear is that a guy's creeping on her. Like go right. for it. 
Right, right, right. <laughs> what uh, have you? What questions do you have for that are off know, the cuff? Uh, nothing really. Um, you know, uh, to to I didn't really deep dive uh, in your social media like like I normally would, but uh, you know, Nashville. You, you said you lived in Nashville for a period of time. What was uh, what was your favorite part about living in Nashville? Leaving it. <laughs> didn't enjoy Nashville. Uh, from Sarah Mathis, Nashville, you got one of those pillows coming. Right, you uh, got a pillow on the way, Nashville. <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I loved, I, I worked downtown for a sign company, and we we did a lot of the bars there, like um, neon signs, very cool, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, vintage. There's a lot of neon down there, country mm -hmm. music bars with, you know, all that. Yeah, and like every once in a while, because I was never into country music, my corporate workers would be like, holy smokes, that's so-and-so, and I'd be like, oh, great. You know, yeah, if you, live know in I... a, if you live in a Nashville and you don't like country music. Uh -uh, I mean, she lives no. in Guthrie and doesn't like country music. Oh, I know. Also well, I don't like funny. banjo. Perfect. No deliverance for you. No. What, what, what is your choice of music? Um, I like indie music. I like um, folk type music, but then I also will listen to um, like heavy metal and System of a Down. Like I'm just kind of all over eclectic. What? You know? Yeah, System I'm a very down. '90s like mixture of stuff. You know. So. Bush oh. Soundgarden. <laughs> no, not Soundgarden. Come on, man. Silver <laughs> chair. Yeah. Yeah, Black Hole Sun, got it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some good bands, man. I like that stuff. Okay. I bet you, yeah. I bet you listen to Pearl Jam. So, uh, of course. I, I mean, Eddie Vedder and all those guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Nirvana, the whole... The Pearl whole Jam thing. is the Nickelback of the 90s. Uh, oh, put that on wax. shame on you. Shame on you. are getting a pillow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, Pearl Jam's not the nickel. Nobody's the Nickelback except Nickelback. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's, it's, Pro uh, and then it's like the Did, 80s yeah. would be like, I don't know. We're going to have that. We're going to have uh, that as a, a, a question. What was the last concert you've been to? Should totally be in our ooh. show notes. Me? What's yeah, the last yeah. concert? Kanye I West, right after graduation came out. You went to Kanye West? Oh, well, oh no, I guess, I mean, the first real con, like the last big concert, like in Chesapeake, when it was still Chesapeake, or it was a fourth Just time. last concert, uh, the last concert you've been to. Oh, it was uh, Toby. And I can't, I can't pronounce his last name. Toby Mac? Uh, no, hell no. What? Toby <laughs> Mac? Uh, What's wrong with Toby Mac? Uh, he's like 50 years old at this point. I don't know. Uh, Ancient. Not, I don't want to, you know, if I want to listen to an old rapper, I listen to like Wu-Tang or something. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> to Toby Mac uh, in his Christian raps. I'm, I'm cool <laughs> on all that. Uh, I don't, you know, there's only so many words you can rhyme with, you know, uh, God. Uh, but moving on, uh, last concert was this Toby uh, Ngawe uh, dude, he's from DC, he's a rapper, he did, did the Tower Theater, it was a sick concert. I'm pretty sure I'm butchered his last name, but um, it, was a, it was a great concert. Tower Theater, if you haven't been to a concert there, as soon as the world opens back up, is a pretty sweet uh, concert venue. What about definitely you, a different vibe. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the last one I went to was the Decemberist. So definitely a different vibe. <laughs> Is that folk? Decemberist? I don't think I've heard of them. Yeah, they're from like uh, the Pacific Northwest and they're, okay. I'll have to send you, uh, they're amazing. Yeah, but they're more like storyteller kind of like songs. I don't know. Okay, like Mumford and Sons or something? Yeah, but like, be yeah, but they started before Mumford and Sons. Like, really? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. No, I'm kind of like right. a purist. Yeah. So, but kind of like that. Yeah. Okay. They have a song that's um, talking about a guy who um, left, like got with his mom after his dad died. This is back in the day. It's called Mariner's Revenge. And so he basically bleeds his mom dry and leaves his mom to just like die a horrible death. And so he spends his whole life tracking down this guy that to Hold get on revenge second, on him. This is a movie or this is a song? It's a song. It's called the Mariner's like a good Revenge. Yeah, let him like tell the story, movie. man. Let him finish the story. And sounds so like a good he, movie, though. 
so he he ends up getting on a sh uh, a ship and and working his way across the ocean until he hears a tell of a guy that's like known for like basically robbing women of their fortunes and so he goes to sell with some um with some sailors and finds him and as he's getting revenge um he, they are attacked by a giant well and they're both in the giant well it's just them two left alive and he is about to take on his revenge as he's dying the song's amazing it's called mariner's revenge you should check it so out so it sounds like it's a pretty good music video as well because it sounds like there's a lot that's being conveyed through storytelling through video not just lyrics and music yeah, and yeah, and that's most of their songs. Like, if you're not into them, you might as well at least check them the out. The classic Kevin Fetter line. Uh, that, that was my uh, that was my dream forever, man. I, was, I, I thought that guy was my hero uh, for a period of time. That guy's winning. He got four hundred million from Britney Spears. Backup dancing to four hundred million. Oh, I that's, know. I kept thinking, who is Kevin Fetter? Because I've heard that name, and then yeah, Kevin Fetter, like K he, Fed, he was the Britney uh, yeah, Spears guy. I haven't Ooh. heard the name K Fed in like yeah. 10 years. Oh man, that, that, that was a, a idol of mine for a period of time. I was like, I, I know I'm just going to meet a rich. Are you being serious uh, right now? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's a hero for sure. I wanted to be that guy and, until I realized he was a scumbag and like that was not the way to okay. achieve wealth and all, there the, you go. all that type so of stuff. The real question but me, is, Jake, is did you take up some, uh, some dance classes just to get. You know. <laughs> You know that would have been a, a a good plan of action, uh, I, and, I, and I probably should have. I've I've tried to. Uh, I I have a couple friends that are are dancers, and I've kind of like jokingly told them I was gonna come, you know, take dancing classes. But yeah, me at nineteen, uh, I I thought that was gonna that was the path for me. Uh, was wow. somehow uh, you know coming up on Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera or even Mariah Carey, just one of the you know those i mean uh, all are well, all are viable options really right so yeah it's, <laughs> it i don't know what matter. happened i don't i don't know what happened to this interview but i apologize that's all i'm saying <laughs> i don't that was, you know that's part of life uh, okay uh jake did you have any more uh specific no, questions uh, for, for no, your research no. from your heavy research no. on yeah your investigation uh, your investigative why, report you know, yeah, that's why I uh, I say we gotta you gotta phrase that differently because I'm not. Uh, I just I'm like not doing, doing it. Uh, yeah, well, you make it seem like I'm a. Well, it's like you, out here. you. Well, you. Uh, the whole point is you, you send the the guests the show notes, and then they're like, okay, sure. these are my these are my questions, and then you're like, yeah, okay. I understand your strategy. Overall, <laughs> but I'm saying to you, just to get them. To I'm not like, doing what? any of the things that you are claiming that I'm doing. Uh, and, it make, and then I but come you don't up have with to some tell question. That, like, oh, I've seen Nashville. like posts from like five years ago where Jake's starting to like it in the middle of the night. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right there. That's like that's the stuff that makes me look like a creep, and I'm not with that. <laughs> so, like, so the frame this question is like, uh, especially like if if someone's uh, Facebook or whatever or their Instagram is private, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to follow them. And then they, you know, I'm gonna do what you gotta do. Gotta is you gotta, here's, here's, here's the new format. What you do is you get a folder when I announce that, make it like real thick looking. Like no, I did a little bit of work, yeah. you, but it's no, okay. That's, exactly, that's, that's the happening. opposite of what I'm trying to accomplish here. You can I'm literally see to, people sweat just starting to yes. run. Yeah, no, <laughs> that that makes it stressful. What I'm trying to do is you need like, a whole hey, filing this, cabinet where you're just going yeah. through all these people. <laughs> No, I just want anecdotal things like that hot, like hot ones. Hot ones does a digital deep dive, like, oh, explain this Facebook post, and they pivot to that, and they go, oh, or this Instagram post, like, what, what, what was happening here? That's what I'm trying to. That's more like not a private investigation. I got you. Followed yeah. you to your mistress's house situation. That's <laughs> weird. Uh, yeah, I'm just having fun here. Um, okay, so wrapping up. One of our uh, staple questions that we ask all of our guests is if you were to sell your house, Sarah, and let's say you were not hypothetical, so you were not in the business today. Or anyone on your team. Yeah, who would you hire to sell your house? And the rules with it is you can't pick anybody that's kind of already like on your team. I know you'd probably want to 
pick me and Jake. You can't pick us either. Uh, right. So you, you, you got to just give a shout out to another agent in our marketplace of who you would hire. Okay. Uh, Cheryl Mosier. Do you guys know her? She's a wonder woman. I do. Yeah. We really played roller familiar. derby together. I'm surprised you did Jake roller didn't derby. Do that. Oh my gosh. I feel like you phoned in my PI work. Like he just. Yeah. Did. Yeah. I know. I, absolutely. I swear. <laughs> We're going to have to I, talk I about that. He, he didn't be prepared for this one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Terrible uh, back work. So, I mean. Cheryl is amazing. She's dedicated to her job. Like she lives the job and she's an awesome like uh, mother and just a uh, community. Or she's involved in her community. Now, I mean, she works all the way in Yukon, but I have no doubt like like, you know, wherever she sells a house and she'd probably be like, oh gosh, Sarah, but wherever she sells a house, she gives it a hundred percent. Like I've seen her just on her days off going and just weeding people's gardens and stuff. Like she's old school, but new school, you know, just wonderful. Old school meets new school. I like it. Okay. Well, good job, Cheryl from Preston, Miss Mathis. Okay. So what makes you unique? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> don't know I you know sometimes it's like an existential question like uh you know am I different like what what's what's actually Sarah but I think that if you were to ask my clients it would just be um my just down just the way that I speak to people just kind of down to earth I don't try to over explain um did we lose Cody I think we lost his video because he's touch and stuff but oh yeah no I don't think we <clears throat> anyway I just I think it's just the way that I speak to people and I try to just be a partner to them and I think that that makes it unique whereas I'm not really like you know I know all this and you don't like it's just we're all on the same playing field we're all on the same team and I feel like there's with you being as uh, intense as you know as we said it earlier uh as you are I think there's uh there's a little more level of, of self-awareness when you're, you're working across a deal and you kind of see what another agent, how they're approaching the situation. You're like, well, I would have done that completely different. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I, you know, there's, there's things like little pieces that you can kind of disseminate yourself from someone else uh, in, in the moment, but it's, it's pretty hard to go. Oh, I'm, I'm different because I'm, you know, Right. Whatever. Yeah. And that's, that's true. And cause we have, 6,000 realtors in just the Oklahoma City MLS area, you know, 6,000. 6, yeah, I'm on the MLS board. And that's what I think they said, like 6,000. And so to say that I am different in this way, I, you know, it's just, it's difficult. So yeah, I would say if I'm not tooting my own horn, which I'm going to do right now, um, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it right now, um, is that I am not too good to do both persons, both agents job, which we all have been in that cross sell. And, but, you know, I just, I'm not too good to clean the toilets and I'm not too good to go show a house for somebody. I just, you know, like I, I try to tell my girls, like, you are not better than anybody else and you are not going to ever outwork everybody else, you know, so you just have to just understand that your job is wherever you are, you know, mm -hmm. so. Okay, that's good. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm out of question. So it's been a really good interview. Um, Sarah, where can the viewers and listeners find you if they want to connect with you? Well, they can find me on Instagram at Milk and Honey Realty, and they can also find us on Milk and Honey uh, Realty on Facebook. Um, they can give us a call at 405-215-3515, and they can also send us an email at sarah at 405hive.com. And uh, thank you so much for having me. This is fun. Awesome. Well, I, I really enjoyed it. I know Jake did, and I know our viewers will. So um, thank you, Sarah. We'll catch you next time, everybody. All right, got to go show. Bye, guys. See you.